Thank you for joining with us. You know, the Christmas service really is one of my favorite services of the year. It's not just because of the songs, it's not just because of the lights or the candles, but because it redirects my heart to the purpose of the holiday, the reason for the season, that God took on flesh and came to be with us in Christ Jesus. And so our, uh, my goal always is during the service to remind every person that the reason why God came was to be with us, Emmanuel, God with us. John 1.14 tells us, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as the only true Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Emmanuel. Emmanu in the Hebrew is the word that means with us. Emmanuel, El, is Elohim or God. That is, God with us. Emmanuel. Uh, not God with the rich, not God with the religious, not God with only those inside the church building, but God with us. Uh, who is God with? Well, it's the average, the lonely, the insignificant, the uh, discontented mom, the stressed out dad, uh, the exhausted teacher, the forgotten mailman, <laughs> the heartbroken grandparent, the high school student right now that's freaking out about his grades and wondering about college in the future. Or the kid that feels like he really has no real friends. That's us. That is God with us. God not only came to be with Abraham and Moses and uh, Noah, these great pillars of the faith, but with us. Now, we don't feel like pillars of the faith oftentimes. Sometimes I feel like a measly toothpick of the faith or a small blade of grass kind of faith, we feel like we are barely holding on sometimes, and sometimes we feel like we could snap at any moment. But Isaiah 42 is a wonderful promise. God says, a, bru a bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not snuff out. If you feel like you're at the end of your rope, uh, you need to hear these words. God has made a way for each and every one of us to be with him. Now, today, at this moment. The whole story, the whole theme of Christmas, the songs that we sing and the whole purpose of our service together is to remind our hearts that the God of the universe, the creator of the cosmos, <laughs> has had a plan from the very beginning and that plan was to be with us. But because of our sin, we know that the relationship has been broken ever since the Garden of Eden. But God had a plan. It wasn't plan B or plan C or plan D. It was his plan A. And his plan was to be with his people. And someone might say, you know what? I don't really believe that God can be with me or wants to be with me. I'm too messed up. I'm too dirty. I, I've made too many mistakes. I keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. I'm not worthy. When you start to think you're not worthy of the God of the universe coming to be with us, you're right. You're not worthy. <laughs> but his coming was not based upon our worthiness. It was based upon his kindness, his grace, his mercy his forgiveness, and our neediness. He came to be with us, just as we are, dirt warts and all. <laughs> God came to be with me. God came to be with you. But he didn't come to stay at arm's length away. Uh, like, well, I'm just going to kind of be with you, but maybe here from a distance. No, the name of Jesus means God with us. Not above in the sky in the sweet by and by when we die someday. Not maybe if we're good enough. He wants to be with us. No, that's not the message of Christmas. Christmas tells us it's all about Emmanuel, God with us. You know, Margie and I are blessed with seven grandchildren. We love them. Grandkids are great. Uh, I always say that if you can skip kids and go straight to grandkids, do it. <laughs> with grandkids, you get a do-over. You get to spoil them rotten. We love our grandkids. And of course, our grandkids are the smartest, the best looking, and the greatest grandkids in the world. And if you don't believe us, just ask us. Margie and I will tell you. It's true. <laughs> but the problem with our grandkids right now is that they're spread out all over the country. We have three in New York. We have two in Washington, D.C. We have two down in Southern California. And the only way we see them is with FaceTime or Instagram or with messaging. That's not the same as being with them. We can hear them on the phone. We can see them on the video. We can watch them on FaceTime. But that's not the same as being with them. 
Marjorie was back in New York a few months ago, and uh, we FaceTimed together, and she was with the grandkids. And I remember thinking after our FaceTime, I thought, you know, I don't want the video. I don't want the call. I don't want the pictures. I want my wife. I want my grandkids. I want to be with them. I want to hold them. I want to walk with them and talk with them. I just want to be with them. I can't do that on the phone. You know, for thousands of years, God had a plan, a plan to be with his people. Now listen, when you look at the Old Testament, parting the Red Sea was amazing. Sending down fire from heaven was insane. But it's not the same as being with someone. Hearing God's voice, that's life-changing. But it's not the same as being with him in constant communion. Reading the letters and notes from God are important. They're necessary. They're good. But it's not the same. It's incomplete without him. God with us. It's so simple, it's so profound. Jesus wrapped himself in flesh as proof that God wants to be with us. And that's what we've read here in, in John 1:14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only true Son from the Father, full of what? Full of grace and truth. Those are the words that describe why our Heavenly Father came. Grace, undeserved favor. God's riches at Christ's expense, G-R-A-C-E. People 2,000 years ago did not deserve Jesus. Listen, Mary and Joseph, as good as they might have been, they didn't earn God's special treatment of them. The disciples, they weren't like super good looking or had their act together and God one day thought, you know, they're, they're good guys, they're totally legit, uh, they've worked hard, I think I'll hang out with them for three and a half years. No, uh, they didn't deserve God to be with them. We don't deserve. God to be with us. It's all about grace, unmerited favor. It's a gift. And it's the biggest and most necessary gift that you could ever, ever receive. Forgiveness and freedom from our sins. Because God's word is clear that because of our sin, we are separated from God. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He came to us. He initiated, we responded. He made the first move. Why? Because we couldn't. We couldn't do it. That's grace. But Jesus came in grace and truth. God is all about truth. All through the Bible, God talks about truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. John 16, 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. That's the Holy Spirit. The truth is that God knows that the thing we need most of all is him. We need to be with him. He came to be with us. That's what Christmas is all about. And so he, he sent a part of himself, his son, to live that perfect life because we couldn't, to die the death that we deserve to die because of our sin. But then he also makes us new creations that reflect him and his grace and his truth. And so when Jesus raised from the dead and, and then 40 days later he ascended into heaven, he didn't leave us to be alone again. He didn't say, well, you know, work things out for yourself. No. He sent a part of himself again, the very Holy Spirit of God, to be with us, literally to reside within us. I mean, how much closer could God be than making his home, his residence in our very hearts? God with us. Not just 2,000 years ago, but today, now. That's what we are celebrating at Christmas. That baby was born, uh, and he was none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself, God's own son. And so my question that I have to ask you is, do you believe in him? Is God with you? Is his spirit within you? If you have not confessed your sin, if you've not believed in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then his word is clear that you are still separated from God. But as soon as you confess, as soon as you embrace him, and, and, and well, John 10, 4 tells us, if you confess that Jesus is Lord, he's the boss, he's the one in the driver's seat, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's all it is. God then will be with you. Okay, so what if you already believe in Jesus as your Savior, but you don't feel like God's very close today? Maybe God feels distant and removed. Someone once told me that, hey, if, if God feels distant, guess who moved? <laughs> First of all, I, stop trusting your feelings. you got to Come back to the truth of what God's word actually says. Deuteronomy 31, 6 promises, God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. 
Joshua 1.5 repeats, I will never leave you, never forsake you. Hebrews 13.5 says it again, I will never leave you, ever. He is always with us. Then the author of Hebrews adds, and so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? What can this world do to us? Nothing. Romans 8.10 declares, and Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gave you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. Is the Almighty God able to sustain you through the mountain or the valley that you're on right now? Absolutely. God is with you. Even when you hear the enemy uh, remind you of the lies that maybe you've believed in the past, go back to God's truth. What does God say about you? I believe that Jesus, as my Lord and Savior, is a uh, king, and therefore I know that he is Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.